Hello everyone, this is Levi Sheridan, and today I'm making an update video on my investment casting setup. This is an update video to the very first video on my investment casting series I made about two to three months ago. Since then, I've made several casts with my setup. And I have some experience with the machines. I also replaced one of the furnaces, but everything else is essentially the same in this area of the setup and that area of the setup. Uh, so I'll mostly just be talking about my experience with the machines. Uh, let's start on the left with the Tabletop Furnace Company Burnout Oven. This burnout oven is extremely well built. It's made out of steel and is extremely sturdy. Uh, the burnout cycle is programmed into this PID controller here. It's extremely easy to program and it uh, once it's programmed, you essentially just click start and everything is underway without any other user intervention, which is great. It has a memory, so even if you turn off the machine, you can just turn it on, press start, and it will remember your burnout cycle. This is what the inside looks like after several casts. There's some residue on the door definitely a lot of soot right below where the flask sits but in general everything is in terrific perfect working condition there is some superficial damage from me hitting the walls with the tongs and uh, the sides as well but part of the reason i really was appealed by this specific furnace was because of these passive safety features here these columns of material essentially protect the coils uh from from anything hitting them. You can see it's, de it's done its job a few times. There's a few dings in there. Uh, I think that's a really great idea because the coils are still in perfect condition, essentially the same condition they were in when they came. So apart from the superficial damage, everything is in great condition. The coil, the thermistor, this is something I made uh, with just some grading material. It's made from steel. I got it at Home Depot, cut it with my Dremel and bent it with some uh, pliers and my vise. And that works well for the purpose of keeping the flask up off the ground of the furnace. Uh, so in general, I really enjoy this machine. I highly recommend it to anyone who uh, can afford it for their setup. It's about $600. If you are not interested in making your own burnout oven like I was, uh, I think this is one of the best options to go with. I don't really think there are many other options for a similar price point in terms of a, a burnout oven, unless you're making your own. Uh, but on the market, this is one of the best options, I would say, and I would really recommend it to to uh, anyone because it, it's compact, it's well-built, it is efficient, it does what it's supposed to do well consistently. Uh, moving on, we have the vacuum casting system. This is from uh, the Vevercast vacuum system from Joy Buy. I bought it on Walmart for about $600 as well. And it works well for its two intended purposes. It's, it's well built, it's a little heavy, but I'm not moving around. It serves two purposes. Here on the left, we have the investment table. The investment table prepares the plaster to be poured in the mold and then prepares the mold by removing air bubbles to ensure as good of a quality part as possible. This is plastic. Uh, it's probably good it's plastic because I think I've dropped it once or twice and it probably would have been broken by now if it wasn't, uh, if it was glass. Uh, but yeah, this it works well. It always pulls a good seal. Like I have no issues with it ever not pulling a good seal. Uh, and then on the other side, we have the casting chamber which also works extremely well. This is a third party gasket I bought because over time I deteriorated the quality of the first gasket this machine came with. But in general, this part works really well. If there's going to be an issue with this machine, it's gonna be over here and it's not gonna be because of the machine. It's gonna be because of you not ensuring there's a good seal. Personally, I've had one or two uh, experiences where there was not a good seal. One time I didn't catch it and my part completely failed. The other part, thankfully, I did catch it using the gauge. I saw that the vacuum didn't pull fully and then I took the time really quickly to ensure that the seal was good and pulled the vacuum again. It worked, which is great that we have this gauge so we can ensure that in, there is in fact a good seal and a vacuum is pulling. Uh, but in general, this works really well. Uh, the seals are a little tight that I bought third party. I don't rem remember where I got them from, but in general, this is really well built. I've had no issues with it. I would recommend it to every single person getting into investment casting unless you are dead set on making your own vacuum system. In fact, I, I would recommend not making your own vacuum system unless like that's what you want to do, unless you enjoy making things and it's just like really what you want to do. And I say that because while I'm sure you could probably make something that works well that's maybe comparable, this is just easy. You get it. It's, I think, $600. It comes with some tools. It comes with the flask. It's well made, there's there's a nice gauge, there's a nice switch. The pumps inside is a pretty generic pump that is consistent and works well. This this switch works well. It comes with a bunch of stuff. It just, it's easy to use. And unless you're making it, maybe you can make it for a hundred or 200, $300 less, I, I don't know. Like I've definitely seen great vacuum systems, but I, I just think like 
if you're gonna if you're not gonna make if you wanted to make all three of them or say you're gonna make two of three of them i would recommend that you don't make this one you make the other two and in by the vacuum system because it's something that is very important in the end resulting quality of of the part and you want something that's going to work well work consistently and I, I just think it's just nice to get something that works out of the box moving on to the metal melting furnace this is also from the tabletop furnace company and it's the quick melt pro 60 the 60 designation refers to the size of the flask you can interchange this face plate and uh, it can accommodate bigger flasks i actually have one on order for an 100 ounce flask but in general it has the same great build quality as the burnout oven because it's made by the same company in a very similar style with the same materials all the electronics are isolated you can't program this one so you just enter one temperature and it goes there and holds it well uh, but in general like like i said this works very consistently uh the flask goes in well and easily there's no damage in there that's some graphite residue i should probably clean up uh but in general like i said this machine works just as well as that one they work well they work consistently and i really just love how well they're they're built they're extremely compact and light so when i move to new york in a few months i i will feel comfortable that these professionally made machines these are not machines that i made i i personally when i go to new york i the reason i bought these machines and spent the money on these nice machines was because when I go to New York in a few months from now in a small apartment, I want to be sure that the machines I'm using are well built, they're safe to use, and I can be comfortable with the fact that I'm operating them in a building full of hundreds of people uh, and that I, I know that they're going to work, work well, safely, and consistently. So, so that's part of the reason I got them. And I, I also don't think I could... I don't, I, I can't, I'm not going to say I don't think, I cannot build something that's this nice within the amount of time I have and with the resources I have. These machines are really well built. They work really well. I'm sure I could make something that works, but these work consistently. They're well made. They're compact. They're lightweight. They're efficient. It will be easy to move. It will be easy to set up. I don't need a lot of space, and that's why I spent the money on it. If you're going to go make the machines, go ahead and make them. That's great. I encourage you to make things. That's really awesome. But if you are interested in just investment casting, you don't want to go through the process of building the machines for your setup, get yourself some nice machines. I originally had a cheap Chinese furnace that served this role. I'll put a picture of it here. Uh, as you can see, they're, they're very different. But Essentially, I was really unhappy with the Chinese machine. In fact, I broke it the first time I used it because I was testing it. I pushed it to its advertised maximum temperature, and I probably just kept it there for too long, and the machine essentially destroyed itself. It was cheap. It was made in China, but it said made in Italy on it. So, I mean, that's just hilarious to me. But it, it's like, it's probably $300. This is six or $700. I don't remember exactly, but if you have the money, get a nicer metal melting furnace, get a nicer burnout oven. Uh, I don't think there are really many other alternatives for burnout ovens, but in terms of this, you do have the alternative of these cheap Chinese furnaces and they probably were, will work. I can't say for how long or how well because I don't have the experience, but from the experience of owning both of these machines, I can tell you for a fact that this one will last longer. It has no plastic parts. It's extremely well made. You have a company based in the US which will support you, which will help you replace parts as opposed to the manufacture, the cheap uh, mass-produced Chinese furnaces, which will probably be much harder to get any kind of support on. It may be easier to buy replacement parts, but I, I just, in general, I like things that are well-built, things that are, are, are sturdy and solid, and, and that's what this is, and the Chinese furnace is, is not that. It is a Chinese furnace, which claims to be made in Italy, uh, which that says enough for me. So moving on from these machines, uh, we have my wax working station, which is exactly the same. We have the sticky wax. This works really well. This melts, it turns on, this rim gets hot, and the sticky wax works well. This is it. It works well for the purpose of attaching waxes to plastic and, and dissimilar waxes to each other. This is my blue sticky wax, uh, or sorry, this is the red wax here. That's uh, flexible, and then the, the firm blue wax there is, is more firm. Uh, this is my uh, wax carving pencil station. So I have two of them, which is really great. And the tips are interchangeable here. So I have a bunch of tips I can change out and the temperatures are individually, individually controllable, which is really great because I do keep them on different temperatures for different purposes. But uh, I use these tools, these are files. And uh, I typically, I don't know where it is right now, but I have a little like one millimeter 
a piano wire that I use to carve away very small quantities of wax because it's much easier to remove wax during the wax working station than it is to remove metal during the, the filing and the, the finishing process. So I try to clean up the surface of as much wax as possible during the wax working station so I have less work to do later during the metal working station because it's much harder to handle it then. I don't like to use scissors to uh, cut or, or, or any kind of pliers or clippers to cut the wax because it, it gives it a, like a weird like pinched end, which I just don't like working with in terms of attaching it to things. So I use this to kind of just chop it and it gives it a nice clean chop. This is a uh, watch working vise, but I just use it because it's a nice little vise to hold uh, small parts. So like I could, when I'm working on finishing a part, I can just kind of like insert it in there and it holds it well off the table. It's easier to file sometimes, easier to work with the wax on. But in general, this is like essentially the exact same. Like I, I really enjoy this setup. This is probably my favorite part of the entire process. I spend like 15 to 30 minutes here preparing the mold. It's extremely relaxing. I just listen to music and uh, it's nice to like work with these tools and form the wax and mold the wax and, and build up the tree around my 3D printed part. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is pretty much the exact same. So like you're gonna need a cauterization pen like this. Like you can get cheaper ones that are just handheld. They don't have like a, a station or anything, but I, I really like this one. I think I got it on like eBay or Amazon or something. You'll be able to find it, uh, but it comes with the interchangeable tips. It's just really versatile, works well. Uh, this works well from Rio Grande. Uh, the waxes are from Rio Grande, but in general, this like whole setup works really well. I think it's a nice setup to have like specifically the way I have arranged as well. It just works well for me. Uh, it's nice. I also have like a little lamp I keep over here. So I have good lighting when I'm working and, and the mat's nice to have as well, just to keep things clean and, and whatnot. But in general, uh, this is my setup. I'm really happy with it. I think if you are able to afford it and you are not interested in making your machines just for the sake of making them, I would recommend this exact setup. Like there are definitely alternatives, less expensive alternatives. You can make your own obviously, but I think this is the most nonsensical or the most sensible way of going about ensuring that you have a good setup that's quality that will last a long time and it will do what you want to do well. Like you can make your own machines, sure. You could buy cheaper machi machines, sure. Uh, but in terms of bang for your buck, quality, consistency, I think these machines are the way to go. I will continue to make these videos uh, every month or so, just talking about my experience. If I have any issues with them, I'll share them. Uh, I don't think I'll be moving this around or changing this much, but if I do, I'll share that as well. But like I said, really great machines all around. I am in love with these two. This one's nice and I don't like the paint job too much, but I just love the build and the quality and the compactness and, and how well these machines work. Uh, but yeah, this is my investment casting setup uh, as of now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something new. I hope you were inspired to possibly get involved in investment casting because it's a really great uh, manufacturing method and it's really fun to, uh, to, to practice and to experiment with. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're interested, check out my other videos. I'll link some below. Uh, there's more videos in the investment casting series uh, that you can check out. Uh, this is Levi Sheridan. I hope you have a great day and thank you for watching.